Fantastic. Okay, so good morning from Ghana. Uh, yes, my name is. <laughs> Trust you are doing okay. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Thank you for joining me and um, finding the time to do this presentation, or let me say Q&A session, for us to have um, a preview of the destinations that you are offering to our students. So we want to have the recorded version of this video. So I've started the recording. We'll mm -hmm. uh, promote this on our social media platforms. So we are going to start with study in Ukraine. Um, so I know that you are the CEO of Edugain Overseas and you assist international students from Africa and many other places to come and study in Ukraine and in Russia. And your company have um, offices in both Ukraine and in Russia, but at the moment we are speaking from the Ukraine office. Am I right? Yes, madam, perfectly right. Yes, yes. okay. So um, let's start with study in Ukraine. Um, as a company, Dreams Consult, um, as you already know, my name is Ronnie Lawson and I'm the Director of Student Recruitment here in Ghana. And we have two branches as well, one in Kumasi and then one in Accra. At the moment, I'm speaking from the Kumasi office. And so we have um, various partners across the globe. However, we do get inquiries for Ukraine and Russia. And I find it um, easier to work with partners that are already in the country. You know, sometimes dealing directly with the universities, especially in non-English speaking countries can be very stressful. So finding partners like you who also can communicate in English and already understand the process and the system, it makes our work very easy here in Ghana. Of course, we know that it comes with certain charges, but the charges also brings convenience to our students. So we prefer to give them peace of mind and that convenience if it means that working with you is going to give us that solution. Um, so when it comes to studying in Ukraine, um, when, especially for medicine, we do get a lot of people asking how the system is and all that when it comes to medical programs. Um, of course, there are other interests for business and other staffs as well, engineering as well. However, can you give me like a complete overview of how the Ukrainian system is and the Ukraine education is in general and how enticing it is for international students. Okay, thank you for your question, it is noted. Uh, what I can say that Ukraine is a part of Europe and we follow completely European education system. So we completely follow the Bologna system. Due to this reason, after graduation, student can work in Europe and uh, he can actually go to any country in the world. This is the main advantage. Uh, plus to that, we are much cheaper than any European country. Uh, since we are just joining the European Union. So here it's a combination of low fee and high, equal, uh, high quality of education, which attracts a lot of students from all over the world, including European students, because here okay. they can get uh, all the necessary in a very low price. Uh, when we are talking about medicine, what is important uh, that all the education is based on practical classes. From the second year, students already join hospitals. They talk with patients, they diagnose uh, patients, they uh, provide the medical treatment, etc. So by the moment of radiation, they can actually already work. They are ready for it. They are not scared. And uh, the universities believe that uh, marks, it is not something which is the most okay. important. Uh, they believe that the most important, so there is no any um, problem regarding marks from the school of the student or serious entrance exams or IELTS, TOEFL, etc. Students simply send their documents and they get admitted within just one day, okay. which is a huge advantage for them. Okay. Uh, education is completely in English medium. They don't need to learn another language. They know, don't need to change their minds. They simply reach the country and join classes from the very beginning. Okay. So those are the main plus points, like practical classes, English medium, and easy admission and affordable price, what usually attracts students from all over the world to study in Ukraine. Fantastic. Um, I do agree with you when it comes to the cost because I've met a Ukrainian student who is back in Ghana 
and he did um, confirm that, especially when it comes to the living cost food, he did mention that a hundred dollars can take care of him for the whole month or even more. So I think, it's yeah, I, yeah I, I heard that from the horse's own mouth from a returned student in Ghana. And he did mention that um, other places in Europe, though are more popular, at the end of the day, you have to, you know, spend more money living in those cities compared to, you know, studying in Ukraine. You did mention that uh, you are now part of the European Union. However, I'm aware that you are not um, a Schengen country. Is there any plans um, that maybe in the next couple of years or something, Ukraine will also become a Schengen country? Because a lot of Ghanaians are very interested in Schengen countries so that they can have that flexibility. It actually will happen within several years because already the first steps towards it are made. For example, for Ukrainians, we don't need Schengen visa to go to Europe. Okay. For those who have temporary residences, they still need to apply for it, but they get it very easy because with okay. Ukrainian visa, it's very easy to get Schengen visa. Okay. And okay. Uh, now we are in this process of joining the European Union, which should be completed within several years. Okay. Once it is done, we will be completely in the Schengen zone. Oh, okay. Okay. So the uh, process is still um, ongoing. So at the moment, if a student is studying in Ukraine and they want to visit other European countries, they need to apply for another visa, right? Mm -hmm. This is correct. Okay. Currently, yes, but okay. within a couple of years, it won't be required for that. All right. That's good news then. Okay. You did mention that the grades are not very uh, important. Um, however, sometimes people associate grades to the quality or how the system is. So if the grades are not too good and the system is accepting them, it would create an impression that maybe because the education is not quality, that is why they can accept any grade. Is there no cutoff point or you have a preparatory program that is why you accept any grade? Actually, it is working out a little bit different way than usual here. Okay. Like a uh, school always has a human factor. Some students can get low marks because he's just not in good relationship with the teacher or okay. any other reason. Yeah. So here we accept students with any marks, but uh, the teaching is very strong. So they start teaching from the basics okay. till the most difficult topics. Uh, and uh, students are supposed to attend every day. In case if student is not attending, he will still have individual classes, etc. So teachers are prepared, even for the students who are, for whom it's difficult to catch information, they have individual classes. Okay. But in case if student after one year didn't attend classes, his uh, attendance was very low. In this case, students can be expelled out of the university. Okay. So they accept all the students, train them, and in case if student doesn't want to, he will simply need to leave the university. That's good to know. So you can come in with poor grades, but it doesn't mean you would uh, come in and relax. You would have to go through a very rigorous system to pick up or be expelled from the university, right? Yeah, exactly. Fantastic. So when it comes to um, English, you, you did mention all the programs are in English, so people don't need to switch their languages. However, for this professional and practical programs like medicine, nursing, engineering, and things like that, especially for medicine and nursing, where students would have to interact with patients, mm -hmm. how, in terms of percentage-wise, in Ukraine, do you think that a lot of people can understand English or the students will need to learn the language to deal with patients? You see, patients are mostly people who are not very young, like um, till 30, almost all people in Ukraine okay. speak English, but okay. patients it's usually 30 plus. Okay. So in this case, students will still need to learn local language. They will have it as a subject inside their curriculum. Okay. It's not an exam level. It's not a difficult grammar. It's not any extra cost for that. Uh, but they study basic language, uh, medical terminology, some basic reading, just to be able to communicate with patients and understand what is the complaints, what is the treatment, diagnosis, okay. etc. Okay. So anyway, they will study it. After first year, usually students can speak on simple topic in Russian language. Mm. From the second year, they got fluent. Mm. Okay, very good. All right, so in Ghana, we have... Um, WASI student, which is our general high school final certificate exam. However, we do have some students who are studying in international schools and then they write the um, GC, uh, international, you know, G, IGCSE, and then we have the A-levels as well. So um, at this um, point, 
with the WASI, the IGs, and then the A level. Because some people, after the IGs, which is the O level, they don't continue to write the A levels. Would mm -hmm. they be would they be admissible to Ukraine? Yes, but for students who don't have A level, who has only O level, there is an opportunity to join for one year pre medical department or okay. pre engineering, depending okay. on which course okay. they're going. Okay. This one year will be equal to A level for the student okay. in Ukraine. Okay. So one year. Yeah, after that student can continue on the course he have chosen, like medicine, engineering, in okay. English language or in Russian, depending on student's okay. decision. Okay. All right. So do you have any other, um, maybe pre-business, pre-arts, or is just these two, pre-medical and pre-engineering? Uh, pre-medical, pre-engineering, though, something which is the most popular part for the students who are going for, let's say, journalism or law or yeah. economics, the yeah. foundation course, which There's also is a foundation. Okay. Fantastic. Yes, for especially, it is a uh, certain department. For example, if yeah. students from the very beginning decided that he is going to become, let's say, a journalist. So, plus to language, he will be studying also based basic of literature, basic of history, okay. um, and some subjects which will be related with the future speciality. Okay, okay. So the advice is to always double check and be sure before um, they take on any of these programs because the pre-engineering, the pre-medical is popular, but however, the other programs, we need to double check and be sure before we go ahead, right? Anyway, it is allowed. All these okay. programs are allowed and students, they actually, some groups have classes, let's say the, you have three directions in one university, foundation, pre-engineering and pre-medical. Yeah. So students will be attending some classes together, like for those who are going for journalism, they don't need math. So okay. they are not attending math, I but understand. they are attending yeah. history. Okay. So in each university, all the facilities are available. When they are reaching, they are joining the correct group for the students. Okay. Okay. okay, great. All right, so we can find Bachelor of Science programs, Bachelor of Arts programs, basically undergraduate programs in Ukraine. We can find master's program and we can find PhD programs. Am I right? Correct. At all, all levels. Okay, great. Uh, okay, with all these levels, do we have every program at every level or with a PhD? You know, PhD is quite different, you know, different every country and how it operates. And some countries say that just put in the application, and then they will pair you with a supervisor. However, in Ukraine, how does the process work? We know bachelor's and master's is quite straightforward. And then mm -hmm. once the program is available, you'll be able to access. Can you give us a little bit of insight with the PhD? Because it's very uh, popular over here. Uh, about PhD, first of all, before PhD, student must join preparatory department or foundation course. It is very important because PhD is also mostly connected with writing of thesis and with uh, some practical classes. In case if student is going for PhD and uh, preparing to stay in Ukraine and study here locally, he can do so. In case if he has some connection in the home country where he can um, do their practice while studying in Ukraine, they can also make the same thing. So students will need to reach to the country, get enrolled for the course. Uh, then he will be appointed with a mentor. They will make a personal schedule curriculum. They will get all the study materials. And after each student can decide whether he would like to stay in Ukraine or go to the homeland to proceed. All this education process is completely uh, controlled by the mentor. And it can be completed when students have completed the thesis work. There is a minimal direction. For example, if you are talking about medical PhD, a non-surgical course will be four years, okay. surgical three years. This is the minimum number of years, which is considered to be enough to learn uh, the subject where they're going to work in future. But in case in many countries, they accept uh, another number of years, like for example, in America, it has to be five. So students can stay and continue for five years in Ukraine. It's all very, uh, um, let's say, it can be appointed and made uh, according to the uh, desires of the student. Yeah. And yeah. everything is specifically discussed with the mentor. So it's... Okay. It's not also a straightforward program, but uh, it's also very popular among foreign okay. students since they can get everything adjusted to the student. Okay, all right. So um, just as you said, said, it's not very uh, straightforward. So we have um, two options. The students can either do it in, do their research in Ukraine or do it in their home country. That's the first step. 
Now, um, you did mention that there's a, a preparatory course or a foundation course, which is compulsory for um, whatever they decide, whether they want to stay in Ukraine or stay in Ghana or wherever to do the program. Now, do you apply for that preparatory course first or you make your intention known from day one that I want to do PhD in engineering and then mm -hmm. that way you come and do it. It's a one year preparatory program, am I right? Yes, it is correct. Okay, so, so student is saying that he wants to do for PhD. Yeah. Let's say in Aiden, okay. So yeah. automatically first he will start from the preparatory department. Okay, 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 okay. Um, we are going to go into the costs later. So can you uh, say from your years of experience, how much guarantee can you give that after the preparatory program is guaranteed that the, the student who wants the PhD is definitely going to progress into the area that they want to do their research in. Have you had issues where somebody yeah. had to fail and leave the country? No, there are no such issues because if student is dedicated from the very beginning and in case if student is actually leaving their homeland and traveling to another country to study, they are dedicated. Okay, great. So while they are studying, even during the preparatory department, they already can start uh, talking with mentors, they still communicate. Yeah teachers in the same university etc so they can even make the arrangements in advance there is no problem like that because everything is okay okay so now let's go into the cost so for bachelors for instance can you give me like a range maybe from a minimum of thousand dollars to about a maximum of this this that you can study oh. in ukraine yeah for masters mm -hmm. or phd this is the range and then um, that way people can have an idea what to budget for mm -hmm. uh, it depends from university to university of course in the cheapest it is in kiev international european university mm -hmm. the education fee for english medium uh, starts from 2500 per year okay. uh, it's all in english it's mostly economics it engineering etc they have all these okay. courses uh, other universities, it is usually 3,000, 3,500 for the tuition. Okay. For okay. masters, we are starting from 3,000 till $5,000, depending okay. on the university. Okay. Medicine, which is the most popular among foreign students, in the cheapest university, it is $4,000. And then it goes till five, six thousand $6,000 per year. Yeah. Okay. And for PhD as well, what's the back the range? PhD mostly for thousand, for thousand five hundred. Four thousand, fantastic, great. Um, there's also um, a, a, a very important misconception that I, I some students say you can work, um, some say you can't. So it's very confusing. I want to clear this once and for all. I want to know if it is by law that students can work, but they are doing it because the law is not strict or it's not allowed? What, what was the real situation in Ukraine? Okay, on basic study visa, usually it is not allowed to work, but all our students do work part-time, non-officially. Okay. It won't be some serious job, because when they reach to another country, starting from the fact that they don't know local language. So if you find some serious job without language, it's pretty difficult. A lot of students, they work in English speaking clubs, they work okay. in gyms, they work in restaurants, uh, in these directions. Those students who are in IT, IT field, they are the simplest because IT accepts without knowledge of local language, they simply accept students to work there. Okay. For medical okay. students from the third year, they are allowed, as a part of their studying, they are allowed to work part-time with nurses or paramedics at the hospitals where they are doing practical classes. Yeah. So anyway, there is opportunity for them to get enrolled in some jobs, and most of them are doing it. Yeah. But um, they shouldn't rely on very high salary, because even like living cost in Ukraine is very low, and salaries will be at the same level for this yeah, non, uh, let's say, not professional yeah. jobs. Yeah. So it will be okay for them to fit into their uh, budget to cover their living costs, but not to cover their tuitions. Fantastic. Yeah, because uh, that was why I asked that question. I actually know someone who had to return from Ukraine because he went there with a the mindset to work and then take care of his studies, but it didn't work out that way. So it's good that you have to clarify this, that people must be prepared financially. 
Um, so these employers that employ the students, you don't think that um, they can get in trouble with the law? It, it, there's no problem. I just want to no. make sure that my students yeah, nobody, are... Here, yeah, nobody's actually checking it. Okay. A lot of okay. students, they work uh, non-officially part-time because even for employee, like a person who is given job, yeah. he needs to pay um, taxes for each okay. 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 Right. And in this way, they don't need to pay taxes. So they also prefer to accept okay. people work non-officially. Okay. Okay. So like, to find a job, it's easy. Just yeah. they need to understand that it won't be a salary, which is huge, for example. And they need to be ready to combine work and studying because studying is very serious. Yes. Attending yes. of classes should be 100%. And if student is taking some, I don't know, difficult job where he can, he should be there for every day for eight yeah. hours, he will simply not manage. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you because I spoke to two medical students in Ukraine. Um, I, I think the school is called Bogomolet, Bogomolet Medical University. Yeah. And they did tell me that it's impossible to work as a medical student because their classes are very intense and there's no way they could find the time to work. So for them, their parents was actively taking care of them. So that's a very good point to note. So um, I think um, with everything that is said, the final thing is mainly about opportunities for students to stay back. Usually, mm -hmm. usually what is the reality? What really goes on? Do people have the chances to stay or they, they usually go back home? And in terms of the laws in the country, does it permit that or not? It is permitted and how it works. When a student is graduating from the university, his yeah. residency will be valid for three more months. Yeah. During these three months, students have opportunity to find a job. If to pay attention that the last year is always internship, they can remain working at the same place where they were doing their practice. Okay. In case if student doesn't want, let's say, to stay at the same city, he wants to shift to another city, there is an opportunity to extend residency for one more year. Yeah. So students will have one year to look for a job. When he finds a job, uh, he is applying for a work permit. Yeah. Work permit will be given for one year and he can extend it for three years in a row. Okay. After three years, he can already apply for the residency. Okay. So in this case, if students have studied for medicine like say, six years, he has extended for one year, then three years again. After that, it is in total already nine years. Yeah. So with this period of time, he can actually apply for permanent residency in the country and remain working wow. there and living here. Okay. That's here is the difference yeah. between actually Ukraine and Russia. In Ukraine, it's very simple to stay back. Okay. All right, babe. So we are on that note. We are going to move straight into study in Russia. I think most of the questions are very similar concerning the programs and then the price ranges and the same concerns working whilst there, whether the law permits it and things like that. So let's move straight into study in Russia. Um, does first of all, geographically, are they a bordered country like is Ukraine and Russia? You know, sharing borders with each other. So in terms of movement, is it easy? It is bordered countries. So yeah, is it very easy uh, it's for students? Boring, to but still, is it, is it but very easy right for students to, uh, to visit if you are Ukraine? Is it very easy to visit Russia and then vice versa? Mm -mm, no, okay. those are two different countries, and each country has individual visa. Okay. okay. So students supposed to choose from the very beginning which country he prefers because there's a completely different uh, migration process in each of them. Oh, okay. Like a tourist, okay. of course can apply for tourist visa and visit the country yeah. but it's not like he can actually walk uh, one side and back for yeah. one day just yeah. for yeah. okay so before we continue the russia i'm aware that um ukraine visa is not issued in ghana however you can do your submission of documents and your biometrics at the vfs office mm -hmm. right so it's become very easy students don't need to travel to another country am i right Yes, you're perfectly right. He's going to VFS office, submit his document from VFS. They could it to Ukrainian okay. embassy in Senegal, Nigeria. Okay. Uh, there okay. they evaluate document, put visa, and courier it back to Ghana, okay. where Fantastic. students can pick it up in VFS. Fantastic. When he's picking it up, actually, he gets uh, all the information via email. 
mails from VFS, from the embassy, the documents are received, submitted, then it's processed and sent back. All of these updates will students be getting via email. Fantastic. So back to Russia. For that one, it's been done in Ghana, right? The visa process. Yeah. Okay. Okay. For okay. Russia, they don't need even to visit the VFS. They go directly to Russian embassy. embassy yeah. Uh, yeah. Russian visa is also very simple. There is no interview, nothing like that. They simply submit documents. Within one week, it will be express visa. Within two weeks, ordinary visa. They pick okay. it up and they can travel. So between the two countries, the process for Russia uh, is quite Russia, simple. Regarding Russia, what they can underline. <laughs> So the process for Russia is more yes, simple. Yes, uh, the process is simple, but uh, there are some different usually ready within five to seven working days. Okay. Russian invitation visa takes more than months to receive. Okay. So here is a plus point towards okay. Ukraine okay. because it's just faster. Okay. Um, one more thing, Ukrainian invitation letter is valid for six months. Okay. So students, let's say there are two intakes in Ukraine. First okay. intake is September intake when students can reach classes within September, October. Yeah. And second intake is January, February. Okay. So when students receive invitation letter, let's say now in September, he can use it either for this intake or for next intake because okay. it still will be valid. Okay. In case of Russian universities, invitation is valid just for 30 days. Okay. And uh, students are supposed to reach, like, he received an invitation letter, he should go immediately to the embassy, yeah. apply yeah. for visa, and after it, he should Im immediately travel to the country. Yeah. So in Ukraine, it is a little bit easier because yeah. they have time to prepare, they have yeah. time to think, yeah. and they decide by themselves which and they prefer. Okay. Education system, Russia, Ukraine is approximately the same because Russia is also following Bologna education system, following all the uh, European standards, etc. Mm -hmm. So from the point of view of the level of education here, both countries are equal. Okay. Um, practical classes, everything will be the same. Okay, okay. Level of uh, English, would you say a lot of Russians speak English? You know, sometimes people have this mindset that the Russians are, you know, racist and all that, but I mean, you are in the system and then you'll be able to tell how are the African students coping and how are things in reality? Okay, so uh, students, they are usually coming to the cities which are already full of foreigners. Okay. We are not enrolling students to small cities where nobody okay. have ever seen foreigner. Okay. So in Moscow, in all the big cities, people are very much adjusted. Okay. Plus to us, there is like when foreign person is coming to the country, it's something interesting because yeah. you can explore a new culture, you can practice your English, uh, you can find something new. So actually, I would say that Russian people, Ukrainian people, they're mostly friendly towards foreigners. And um, this is a lot of friendship like that. If you will check just the uh, Facebook accounts or um, Instagram accounts of our students, there are always photos with locals where they get in friends very fast. Fantastic. So racism doesn't actually exist in big cities. Okay. So the, the idea is that uh, you place the students in cities that are already you know, um, you know, mixed in terms of diversity. There are yeah. other, you know, uh, citizens around. So it's very easy for the students to feel at home and all that. So I think that's a very good yeah, point. So um, sometimes people want to consider the cost and go to, you know, smaller cities and cheaper cities. But it's always important to think about the cultural diversity as well. You know, like being in Kiev, in Ukraine, and then Moscow, in Russia, I think it's way, it may be more expensive, but at least the students will feel at home and meet other foreigners on a daily basis. So I think that's a very good point. When it comes to the, the price, would you say that in terms of tuition costs, would you say that in terms of tuition costs, mm -hmm. Russia is more expensive or they are all at par? Russia is slightly more expensive, not much, but um, 
if we are talking about Moscow and St. Petersburg, those are two biggest cities in Russia, and they are very expensive. They are two times more expensive than any other city in Russia. Okay. For example, living cost in, let's say, Mahachkala, where we have University of Pskov or Kazan, will be around uh, $250, $300 per month. Then in Moscow, it's minimum $500 okay. in a very okay. modest life. Okay. So here we also need to take care of budget of the student because even tuition in Moscow for medicine starts from eight thousand wow. dollars. In any other city, it is four thousand, maximum five thousand okay. dollars. Okay. So here we take care of budget of the student, and this way we are looking which option he would prefer. Anyway, even if it's Pskov not Moscow, but still Pskov is suggested to foreign students. Yeah. Where yeah. there are more than a million citizens, there are always a lot of foreign people who are living yeah. there. Yeah. Students will be there safe, secure, and quiet, and even it is better than Moscow, as per my opinion. Mm. Because mm. Moscow is huge. There is always a traffic. Students are always in the crowd they need to go from hostel to the university yeah. even if it's closed they need to go to hospitals for practical classes around the city mm -hmm. so they take hours to reach from one hospital to another in other cities like my hachkala etc everything is closed so okay. they are not spending any unnecessary time into the transportation they spend less money and they still live in a very developed in a modern city okay. and usually students prefer to go this way regarding the price in ukraine by the way in ukraine there is no difference in living cost between let's say kiev and odessa or any other city okay there in Ukraine, uh, all the prices in each city is the same. So here I strongly advise students to pay attention to big cities like Kiev, like Odessa, like uh, Kharkiv, etc., where um, cities are mostly the maximum developed, where they have maximum number of universities, maximum number of foreign students. Yeah. Uh, plus to that, they're still cheap. Yeah. Okay, so in terms of staying back, after school or let's say working in school whilst in school is it similar to ukraine or they also have a different type of law for students who want to work whilst in school and then stay back after school mm -hmm. ukraine will be simply easier okay. uh in russia uh they actually can check what type of visa student has so they can mm -hmm. check uh, whether the student have worked or not work jobs will be exactly the same it still will be waiters they still will be speakers in English speaking clubs etc but just as per my opinion it's much simpler to find a job in ukraine than in russia okay, okay. what about what about staying back after school do they have a period to do internships like you said in ukraine they have about three months and all that what's the situation in russia these three months they also will have after graduation, they will have a time, but there, there is no opportunity to extend it for one more year, like in Ukraine. Okay, okay. So okay. there, they will need to be more fast, and in case if they, for example, do uh, internship in the university, in the mm -hmm. hospital, and they perform good, it's like 70%, the hospital itself will offer a student to stay and work there. Okay. Uh, okay. But in case if student doesn't perform well, they will not remain yeah. here. They yeah. will advise him to go and look for a place in another city or in another country. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, I think overall, um, I've gotten a, a general overview and I know that the students will now get the clarity and know exactly what they are going for. Um, so um, basically, the PhD option that we talked about in Ukraine, I, is it similar to Russia as well? Do they also have a foundation that you yeah. need to go through? It's, it's a similar process. It's the same. They're following okay. the same education system. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, I think that's about it. Um, as I said earlier, we'll put this into a promotional form and then promote it on our social media platforms. That way students get the clarity from the source. It becomes very easy for them to make an informed decision because sometimes people come with, oh, um, I know I can get a school in Ukraine for $1,000 or even less. And sometimes you are wondering which institutions are these or what are they talking about? Because what we have is from 2000 or 2005. So should we be very concerned for these students that maybe they are going somewhere they have no idea of? Should we discourage people from going to remote um, cities just because of cost? 
Oh, Madam, one more thing I forgot to mention. Um, this year, uh, there is one university in Ukraine which is opening the online studies for students who are scared to travel during the pandemic. Okay. So in case if uh, for some reason student doesn't want to join the university on campus, at the mm -hmm. same university they can study online. Mm -hmm. In this case, it's also pretty simple. They send scan copies of their documents. Uh, they get the invoice from the university to pay tuition fee. They cover the tuition fee to the university account and uh, they get an access to all the library of the university. They will have a personal office on the university website uh, where they will have schedule, curriculum, uh, all the textbooks, study materials, lecturers will be there. Plus they will have this live lectures with teachers. They will have uh, Zoom meetings with professors for practical knowledge where there will be direct interaction between students and teacher. So within one year, they will find, uh, they will get all this same actually knowledge okay. Uh, okay. which they would be getting when they study in the university because first year it's mostly theory. Yeah. It's mostly yeah. anatomy, histology and other subjects which you actually can study online. Yeah. After one year when the pandemic will be completely managed, they can join the university on campus. Or let's say they got enrolled for the online course, they have studied for three months, and then they have decided, okay, pandemic is over, everything is quiet, I'm ready to fly. He can fly after three months and join studies on campus. Okay. So for this particular university, it is an opportunity for students not to lose any time, and there is no risk with visa, nothing like that, because yeah. they already got enrolled with the university. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, is it in Ukraine or in Russia? It is in Ukraine, in Kiev. In okay, all right. Capital. Okay, fantastic. All right, so um, thank you very much. Um, as I was saying, should it be concerned for students who are looking for very low, you know, tuition costs, especially in remote places in both Russia and Ukraine? Should we discourage them and say, look, it's better to be in a, a city where at least the student population is higher, you know, because we don't want you to feel like you are alone in a city somewhere or because of the cost that is involved. What do you think? You know, when the price is very low, it means that something is wrong there. Okay. Always okay. on the experience. Yeah. I can't tell because uh, like among those universities we are working or among those universities with which we are familiar, Prices always starting from for medicine, it's minimum for thousand. Less mm -hmm. than for thousand, not even one university will teach in English. Okay. Then it means that something is hidden there. Okay. Either a student will come and uh, they will enroll him into the preparatory department instead mm -hmm. of medicine. Okay. Or they will charge extra for, I don't know, let's say exams or textbooks, which should be already mm -hmm. in the team. Okay. So okay. the assumption will definitely appear there, or maybe yeah. it is some city which is located close to a conflict zone because you know that there is the mm. separated yeah. from Ukraine yeah. and it is yeah. not in Russia. But yeah. some people are still offering these cities, yeah. like those universities. Yes, they are working, but they are working in a conflict zone which is dangerous yeah. for the safety of the Yeah, yeah. So of course, Thank it's you. cheaper there. But yeah. Thank you. Thank you for clearing this. So at least it makes them aware and then um, well informed to know these are the reasons why sometimes when something is cheap, you need to do deeper research before you commit yourself. Yes. So thank you so much. So everyone, um, this is Svetlana. She's the CEO of Edugain Overseas, both in Russia and Ukraine. And she's partnered with lots of Ukrainian universities and Russian universities. So she makes our life very easy so we can get all information from her instead of going individually to each university. She gives us the peace of mind that we are looking for. So once you are ready to start the process, we will put you through, get your documents to her, and then you go through with the course. I mean, like she said, everything is embedded in the course. So there will be no hidden charges or anything. Once the offer letter is brought to you, you will see everything that you need to pay. And that will be all. So thank you so much for having time thank to you. do this with us. I'll see it you again. was a pleasure. Bye-bye. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye.